guys Jagbir Singh back with another video of Mastercam 2020 and in this video I will show you how to insert the mill machine and do the first operation which is the facing operation so let's get started so in last video I showed you how to position the part that you have imported from Katia and so the next step is to go to machine which is right here and insert the machine itself you click on mill and click on default so you can see that your machine group have been entered you expand the property you click on file so right here you can replace with whichever directory you want to so now you can see that we will be working with 5-axis part because we can see either we can also make it as a 3-axis but we need different setup so it's better that we use this as uh, as a 5 axis part if we, if we are looking to so what we will do is that we will click on file and bring out uh, the 5 axis that we have in my case it's, ha it's half 5 axis it will take some time to reload and right now you can see that the description has changed you can go to edit you can go to control panel and uh, change some value for the basically for the NC output this is the value that I would recommend like at least this is the value that specifies that your uh, G code doesn't run out of numbers when you are trying to generate the G code after you are done with the machining you click yes and click ok you go to tool settings right up here or by mistake if you click ok you, you can also choose tool settings from here itself so you choose tool settings I would recommend you to choose from material because uh, Mastercam will choose the parameters with respect to the material that you might be using in order to cut default program number it all depends on the drawing number basically when you are going to make any part you will definitely have a drawing with respect to which the part is being made and all the dimensions are given and that drawing will have a specific number associated with it that we, that we are supposed to type in here the main purpose is that while you are going to generate the G code it will help you out to be more organized same as uh, the sheet that you tried to form so let's say I am going to put 1111 just for the sake of example so I'm going to click assign tool number, warm of duplicate tool and uh, use two step. We are not going to use search, uh, search tool library when entering a tool number because it won't allow us to change the tool number as respect to our drawing or tool list. So that's very important that you do not check the last option. So you come right here override default and you click all of these because we need the clearance height, we need the retract height and we need the feed plane as well so clearance height is basically the height at which the tool will stop before cutting and that is going to be the clearance just for the safety factor after every tool change retract height is after a tool is done with the machining it will go back to a certain height and then go back to the turret the feed plane is the just a slight distance that is that the tool stops before it start cutting the material so these parameters are important to check check mark so material you, you can choose any material you can click on library and choose any material that you look for I'm just going to stick with aluminum 2024 so the sequence number is okay don't mess around with so you come to stock setup so now in this case if you know the parameters the value of the stock that you might be thinking to insert you definitely can but if you are not sure you, you can use, always click on bounding box so bounding box is right here you click on it now you can select the, all the entities and selection so it will generate an automatic bounding box for you so now you have these particular values for your bounding box you can see and what will I do is I will just for my reference I'm going to create corner point 
that will make my life easy for future then I click OK so now I do have these points these are basically the corners of the bounding box representing the entire stock material that it should be I'm just going to add a little bit of the material to this itself I'm going to reselect it and I'm just going to add some material basically it's uh, recommended one eighth of an inch from both the sides so basically we are talking about 0.25 on either of the axis on x and y axis on the z we need to leave a lot of material because we are doing most of the cutting on the z axis so let's say I'm going to keep 4.25 for the y I have almost like 5.5 so I'm going to keep 5.75 and for the z it's 0 0.5 so I'm just going to keep uh, close to 1 let's see and then I click OK right here so enter all the values so all the other values are OK I just want to keep my 20 tau for the facing not more than that so 20 tau is basically for the facing and then I click OK you can see the bounding box is created when I come to front view you can see that a slight line is left which I'm going to be using for the facing so that material will be used to face right now I will go to the face itself the very first tool path you go to tool path the first operation is face that we always do we need not to select any change we just click OK so now we are just going to use uh, the face mill for facing you can click on select tool library and I have face mill right here click OK you can name or enter the tool number let's say if tool number is 10 you click enter you can change 10 all the way everywhere so speed rate well it all depends on the tool list that you have let's say I'm going to keep the speed rate to be 25 and let's just let let the speed rate be 30 and spindle speed to be 3000 for example and plunge rate plunge rate is basically how much the tool is going to cut in one shot the plunging of the tool itself so cut parameter we would like to keep one pass so the difference is going to be that you want the face mill to cut your entire part in one shot but uh, because our face mill is of just of three inches we will keep it to be zigzag because our path thickness is about five inches as we in a stock setup so we need to make sure that we allow zigzag because it's impossible to do it in one pass otherwise we always prefer to use in one pass if the part is small and it's under three inches so zigzag and these parameters are okay if we are talking about maximum step over you can keep it to be close to 50 percent if you want it's basically the uh, distance is going to overshoot above the path and the stock to leave on the floor is going to be zero we don't want to keep any distance at the bottom so these parameters are okay the roughing angle well it all depends how you're thinking of cutting well, it's not a big deal so depth of cut you can turn it on if you want to or off is also okay it's not a big deal so clearance this is important to understand how these parameters will work I try to keep all the value in absolute it makes my life easy so the top of the stock we left was 20,000.02 so I'm going to enter that speed of plane is generally almost 100,000 above the stock so it's going to be 0 0.12 100,000 100, is 0.1 inches so just to let you know retract and field plane are generally the same but the track can be 0.2 as well or 0.12 is okay but I would recommend you to choose slightly higher value than speed plane if possible I go to plane so plane are going to be okay so okay all these are going to be top and coolant 
it you can turn it on and you click ok and you can see your first operation is completed and let me show you and verify how it should look like maximize it always tool collision on go to verify color loop slow down the speed slightly and you can see there you go and the facing is done and that's pretty much it for today's video i hope you like it if you like it please don't forget to subscribe like and share and thanks for watching again take care